Welcome everyone to the Grants Online Federal Program Officer Training Webinar. This one topic is on the partial funding process, also known as release of funds. This is, process is done when we have a case of a multi-year award. We've already made the initial award and now we're in the second or, or one of the out years and we want to release some additional funding on that particular grant award. It also can be used uh, even within the same year if you've only uh, given out some of your the funding on an award and there's more money that's available on the application that has not yet been obligated, you can always use the partial funding process to obligate the rest of those funds. So whether or not it's multi-year, it can be used, but most of the time it's used for a multi-year award. Okay? So I'm going to log in here into Grants Online as a federal program officer, the assigned federal program officer. And we have to pass our notice to use. So here is our advisory screen. Before we get started with the process, I just want to go to the process map so that you can see the steps we're going to go through. It does look like a pretty busy process map, and indeed it is, but that is actually because we have actually squished the entire process into one map, whereas for the new award process, it has been broken up into several process maps. So, um, it's really a lot more simple than it looks on this process map for our federal program officers. You only have two tasks that you're going to be concerned about in your inbox. And one of them is the procurement request where you're going to uh, take care of your accounting lines. And the other one is pretty much just a memo that you're going to write that's going to, uh, you're going to use when you forward your award file to the grants management division. From that point on, uh, you have done your part and the rest of it is the grants management review and approval process. And then finally going through the post uh, uh, the post process after the grants officer has signed to get set up in the ASAP system and to go to the Legislative Affairs Office for them to do their particular uh, task. There are different thresholds that will determine whether or not it goes through the Legislative Affairs Office. And in the end, after the end of the workflow, it comes to the authorized representative as an amendment for them to accept or decline. So now let's walk through that process in Grants Online. This process um, that I'm walking through, again, is available on the training resources, and it is also in the training manual that we use for class. There's no task in my inbox to start the partial funding because the system doesn't know when I want to start it. So as a federal program officer, I need to first search for the award that I'm going to use. So I'm going to go to Search Awards. And at this point, I can either, either just search or I can put in a specific award number. I'm going to do a generic search. And I have all the various awards that are in my program office that I have access to. I'm going to go ahead and select this award right here. And as I scroll down, it looks like I have um, given out part of the uh, award. See, the award package has an $8,000 award right here. It looks like um, we already started a partial funding in a previous class for the next one, so I guess that was not a good example to fix. Let me go ahead and find <coughs> one that we haven't done partial funding, but let me show you how I can tell. The award package is for $8,000. That lets me know that that's the total federal funding on the application. The initial award, award file zero, was for $4,000. That means that there was another $4,000 left. Now I can see that there is 
an award file in progress for $4,000. This one is sitting with the grants specialist. And so I see that they have actually started a partial funding on uh, this particular one. Instead of looking at the one that is started, let's go ahead and do one from scratch from the beginning. So I'm going to go back to search awards and let's find the one that we just recently sent to um, the recipient. I believe it is this one right here that ends in a 19. So I'm going to select that award number and let's scroll down on this award number. And I think this is a good one for us to use. <clears throat> this one has a total federal funding for 10000 and we've only obligated five. So let's now go through the process of releasing more funds on this particular award. I'm going to start from the top of the grants file, and I'm going to select the option to partially fund this award. That brings me to a screen here in which I have a place to put in a memo. But before I put in the memo, I need to tell the system which application I'm going to use. Now, in this case, it's fairly easy because there is only one application on my uh, grant award. And so I'm going to open up the application to see the funding lines on this particular grant award, and I can see there are two years of funding. I've already obligated the first year, and I have another year of funding left that I can obligate. It doesn't. I don't have to wait until that next year to obligate those funds. As long as they're available, I can obligate them at any time. So I'm going to go ahead and select this particular application, and now I have <clears throat> another line in which I can indicate to the system how much I am going to add to this particular uh, award. What, what is the amendment amount going to be? Before I do that, I'm going to go to the top, and I want to put in some language into my memo. Now, the NOAA Grants Management Division is very particular about the language. And there has been a guidance document created that the NOAA Grants Management Division would like for our federal program officers to use when you are developing your memo for your partial funding action. And there are several examples here that you should be able to find your scenario in one of these examples. And once you do, I'll just use the first one. You can just simply copy the language right from the guidance document and copy it and paste it into the memo box of the partial funding action. Then you can fill in the blanks. So let's say we're going to go ahead and give them $1,000, even though the year two is more than $1,000. We're going to give them 1000 of it for year two of a two-year, multi-year award, or whatever the actual value should be, okay? <clears throat> Notice the second sentence, all required progress and financial reports have been submitted and accepted. This is important. Before we give the recipient additional money, we want to make sure that we've done due diligence and monitoring what they've done so far and that we're... Uh, and that we are happy with the work that has been done so far on the award. Okay, now let's scroll down to the bottom and put in the amount that we're going to obligate. I have $5,000 that I can obligate, but I'm only going to obligate 1000 of that. So let me put that in. Because this is matching funds, I'll put in my 1000 over here. And I'm going to click Save and Start Workflow. Okay. The system has now started in the background creating two tasks in my inbox. Let me refresh my inbox. And here they are. My two tasks for award number 
that ends in a 19. Here is my release of funds document and my procurement request. If we go back to our process map. These are the two documents right here, our procurement request and our partial funding memo. We also call that a release of funds document. So let's work on our procurement request now. The process is just like that for a brand new award. We're going to complete the procurement request form. We need to put in our approvers. We'll start with our authorizing officials. And we'll add in the requester. The system has already populated the federal share with the thousand dollars that we put in on the memo on the previous screen. We're going to scroll down and add in our accounting line. We're going to remember we don't have to put in, let's see, where's my I need to put we don't have to put in data in these boxes right here because the system will fill them in. If it doesn't, we will just go back and fill them in ourselves. Here's our thousand dollars that we put in here. And let's click save. The zeros have been filled in. Okay. Remember we also have to click the DW validate button in order to bring in our program code. <coughs> so let's do that. And now our program code has been generated. And also we have an indication that we are using a valid code. The one last thing that we must do on this page is to select our descriptor. So we've done that. And now we are completed on this page. Save done. And we have a line of funding on our procurement request. We need to go ahead and enter the matching funds here. <coughs> no error messages, so we look good. Let's click Save and Return to May. And forward to the requester. I immediately get my task as a requester. Let's look at it one more time. It looks good, but there's no validation because I didn't hit the CBS validation button. So let's go ahead and do that. Valid. That means I do have funding available in my accounting stream. So let's click Save and Return to Name and approve it. All right, in the process map, <coughs> excuse me, we just completed this task as a requester and we sent it on to our authorizing official. Now we cannot forward our word file to the grant specialist until this task has been completed. And I'll show you that in just a minute. Now, let's take a look at the release of funds memo so that you can see that it has this red X on it. And that is because the procurement request that we sent to the authorizing official is still with that person. They haven't done their approval to sign off yet. So because of that, there's no forward to grant specialist in the drop down box. So let's go ahead and log off. We'll log in as our authorizing official. And let's see what we have in our inbox here. Here is our task for the procurement request. We need to approve it. Uh, 
All right. The task has been approved. So now let's log off. Log back on as the assigned program officer. Now let's take a look at our award file and there's our nice green check mark because the authorizing official has signed off on the procurement request. That's my indicator that I can now forward to the grant specialist for review and submit. Okay, and we have now really completed the program office part of the release of funds. If we look back at the document, it is sitting with the grant specialist. Let's take a look at the grants file and see what it looks like. Here's the grants file. Here is the award file in progress. Once that has been processed and completed, signed off by the grants officer, it will become award file one. Until the grants officer signs, it remains a ward file in progress. Okay, so that is the, those are the steps in creating our partial funding document. From this point on, the grant specialist would do their work, send it to the grants officer for signature, and then on to the recipient to receive their funds. The, the uh, amount of money that is on this grant award would get um, authorized in ASAP and they would be able to pull the funds down out of the ASAP system. Are there any questions, uh, Yvette? No, they're not. All right, very good. So we thank you for watching this process. We hope it was helpful and um, we are going to sign off on this webinar.